room is destroyed. <laughs> It's chaos, it's chaos in here. I'm back. Actually, it's pretty warm. Um, I'm back. We're live. It's 7.38. I'm a little bit late. I got back late last night from my trip to West Tech. So I am back. And that means I can, for all the guys that are waiting for camshafts, now I can get a whole bunch, ship out a whole bunch of camshafts. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about those anymore until after I get out all the ones that are available. I did bring home, so that you guys know, I brought home probably 40 camshafts or so of various kinds of used ones and stuff. So what I'm going to do is before I announce that, I'll go through and separate them all in the different families and stuff. So I, I have some from, from various different families and stuff. And so you guys uh, can, you know, you guys can get good deals in camshafts after I announce all that, but we're not doing that right now because I want to get out all the camshafts that people have already ordered and get that stuff all shipped out. So everybody's happy and everybody's taken care of. And then I can get start going on the rest of this stuff. Uh, the thumbnail that I have up is a it, it's I took this photo or a video actually, and I'm working on that video. We'll get that up. I have six or seven videos I need to get up now. That won't be these live feeds. They'll be the regular videos, ten or fifteen minutes. But one of them is on my trip to the junkyard. And this photo of this slant six intake manifold, and there are actually a number of them there, which I thought was very cool. Because slant sixes are are kind of cool to find in the wrecking yard. I like some of this older stuff. My question is, <laughs> when you look at this, you look at this photo, um, any, anybody, any of those people out there who are like, have heavy OCD should look at this intake manifold and go, yeah, that's, that's not a good intake manifold. That cannot work. Look how much longer the outer runners are. And then the next set or even shorter than that. And then the middle two are like really short. And so how did those runners how does that manifold even work? I mean, we have a one barrel carburetor or a two barrel if you have the, I think the Super 6 from the factory, or if you have even one of the aftermarket ones that that where they put a four barrel on it, the Aussie Speed ones or Clifford or any of the guys that are offering the intake manifolds for the Slant 6, even with those, you have a four barrel, which is nice. You know, you've got more airflow going into it, which is usually good. It helps with power. But the question is, we still have the same situation. So we have a, an inline six cylinder, and because they need to mount the carburetor somewhere, they mount it in the middle, let's say. And then the, the way that it works is because it's in the middle, the outer runners are long, and then the next ones are slightly shorter than that. And then the two middle ones just go from the carburetor basically right to the head port. And then sometimes they, they take those and they wrap those around the backside of the opening so that... They uh, can also make power. And then on a four barrel manifold, obviously, unless you just have a big open uh, valley, basically a open plenum underneath the carburetor, you have to make sure that in two barrel guys that fuel and air are going to all the cylinders. And then in four barrel guys, when you open up the other two, that all of those are going there too. And you have to have, you know, you have to equalize distribution and all of those things. And, and particularly this is the conversation that I wanted to have tonight and we'll have a poll because now I'm back home. We couldn't do that with the, with the phone stuff, but we'll have a poll. And so the, my poll question is, Okay, so the poll for tonight is, would the stock slant six Dodge intake be better if all the runners were the same length? Instead of being like it is with the longs and the mediums and the shorts, would it be better if they were all the same length? If they were all short or they were all long, um, somehow we were able to achieve that. Maybe as an EFI manifold, they all came out and wrapped around, went into common plenum. The common plenum was in the throttle body. You could also do that with a carburetor, I guess. But you'd have to, it still would have to kind of be central in the common plenum, but all the runners could be the same length. And then the carburetor could go into the common plenum and all the magic, all the air fuel and magic could happen. So my question for you guys is, because I've never done, in this case, six O2 sensors on a slant six to measure and see what's going on with all the cylinders under all the combinations of, you know, RPM and load, 
with that manifold? Like how is the air fuel distribution, first of all, at, at any RPM and load, like at wide open throttle at any RPM or as we make it. And then, and then like, if you just loaded it at 3000, what is it there? What is it as we sweep through from 2000 to 6000 or whatever? A slant six is going to make power way, way earlier than that. But if we, if we did a sweep in it, what is the air fuel? What is the change in air fuel going to be as we go through the RPM range from the, its lowest point of, let's say, 2000 RPM to probably 4000 or 4500 on, on a stock uh, slant six motor? But what's it going to be? Are the longer runners going to have better carb signal? I would argue that they they are going to. So we'll put the we'll put our poll up there. I would argue that they're definitely going to. The signal from the carburetor from longer runners is definitely going to be better, especially in the RPM range that we're talking about, because you're not looking at like a short runner. Yeah, at seven thousand or seventy five hundred or eight thousand, that might be the way to go, but not where this motor is running. And then because we're not dictating how much fuel it gets, like with fuel injection, where we could tell it in each cylinder, okay, you're getting this amount of fuel. And then when we give you that amount of fuel, that's going to produce a given air fuel ratio through the whole curve that could be optimized all the way through. That would be great. With a carburetor, I don't see how that's possible given the change in runner lengths and then given the change in uh, effective RPM for those runner lengths and then given the signal to the carburetor at those different RPM ranges with the different signal that comes from a change in runner length. How, do, how does that work? And yet, <laughs> I say all that and point that out and go, yeah, the engineers obviously didn't know what they were doing, but obviously they did because they're very good at what they do. And these Dodge Slant 6s and other six cylinders too, the, the Chevy has them, Ford has, I mean, everybody has them. So, so all of those have been running around for decades now and working just fine. So my question is, has, has nobody just checked them to see where they are? I'm sure that they did. I'm sure that the, and, and this is the thing that I constantly tell people is that, oh yeah, look at that manifold. That's terrible. The, the engineers didn't know what they do, know what they were doing. Oh, oh they did. <laughs> they, they're very good. They're very good at what they did. And so uh, I, I, that's why I wonder. I want, that's why I'm looking forward to doing testing on these kinds of things. And one of the things that I love about going on the dyno is finding out all of that data. And then oftentimes, more often than not, finding out, hey, look, this, <laughs> this actually works really well. <laughs> all, of my, all of my knowledge and hearsay and, and, and experience on the dyno, um, I can't stand up there and say, hey, look, I've, I have developed a, I've designed an OEM intake manifold like these guys have, because I haven't. But I still question whether or not, like I'm trying to wrap my head around, how does it, how did, how did they get it to work under all of those conditions? And, and maybe it didn't work perfectly. And, and, and because the other thing that goes into this is, is that they're not trying to have optimum power everywhere. They're trying to have other things. Um, and, and, Obviously, with the setup that they use, they achieve those things. And so we we need to look at it. First of all, we need to look at it differently than we do, just not from a, a power standpoint. Yeah, hey, look, we shortened the runner like we made more power. Yeah, they, they knew how to do that, too. But again, I still would love to see what the air fuel curve is. Having run lots of 802s on V8s with different kinds of manifolds and seeing the variations and then cured them with, you know, the sequential injection with individual cylinder tuning, having gone in and done all that and, and then been disappointed by the amount of power that was available after we did that. But the safety would certainly be there. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious as to see how these, um, how these one barrel or two barrel intake manifolds on these inline six cylinders, how well they work, how well they distribute fuel. And then also after that, once you run that and go, hey, look, they had to put the carburetor somewhere. They, they were running carburetors back then. This was a cast iron manifold. This was a low performance deal. It was a, something that they had to build for a certain amount of money. It had to cost a certain amount. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to make money off of it. All with, given all of these limitations, I still would like to see what happens when, what would happen if we made them all of, of the short runner length? Like we trimmed off the backsides of it and just put a common plenum there and, and had short runners and then medium runners and then long runners. Cause I, we all know that I like adjustable manifolds. 
would it would it make more average power in the RPM range that we're talking about if we if they were all this if they're all equal if they were all the same long runner length if they're all the same as the outers let's say let's pick the longest ones those would be the outers if they were all the same length as the outers would that work probably so I I I, I think it would um, but that doesn't mean that the other design didn't work. But when I see these, when I'm walking by, that's that's the place that I go to. That's how my mind works. I'm walking by that. I'm like, oh, cool. First of all, cool. I slant six. I like that. That's awesome. Is it the is it the two barrel manifold? No, it's a one barrel manifold. Um, and then I look at it and go, how does that work? Well, wh why does that work? How how could that possibly work? And we know that it does because it's driven around a lot. But how could that possibly work? And then and then how can we you know how can we change it what what's going to happen if we change it it would that even be worthwhile i mean if we made all the runner lengths the same and let's say we picked up a you know 10 or 15 foot pounds of torque or whatever we picked up from changing from making the rest of the runners longer you know does does a guy need to do that Pro probably not on a stock motor you know probably not but <laughs> in any case that's that's me walking through the rec yard and that's me at every car that I stop at, like the the, the small block 400. Hey, that's a, I wonder, well, I don't know if it was a small block 400. It's just a small block. Hey, what heads are on that? <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a quadrajet. That, that looks cool. I, I I wish I had another quadrajet because I need one. Um, what, what size, you know, what size small block is that? Is it, is it a 307? Is it a, is it a 400? Is it, is it a 350? Is it something good? Is it something I should be interested in? It would it would be very easy to go there, you know, even with a minimal bag of tools that I could take valve covers off and things and look at stuff like that and and just go like down the rabbit hole on each one. I mean, I could spend a whole I could do a whole video just looking at that Kingswood estate wagon and talking about what that was, especially in 69, how cool that wagon is and how this definitely should this should be much better if it were on the road. And then what, what did it come with? Let's look at the VIN number. Let's, let's, you know, let's take a look at stuff. Let's take the back seat up and see if we can find the original build sheet on this thing. Let's see what it come came with. Did it come with a posi? Did it come with a turbo 400? Did it come with cool stuff? And that would be an easy deal to do at a wrecking yard. You know, you could find that kind of stuff. So let's see what you guys got going on. It's good to see everybody. I was obviously doing lots of stuff on my phone, doing lots of truck tech <laughs> from my truck but it's good to get home and see Lisa and the boys and, and the puppies. They were very, they were very, very excited. Did it valiant Martin, Eric, what's up, Dennis, Alan. Thumbs up Weber's. Yeah. Weber's on there would be cool. And you're done. Thumbs up. Good evening, sir. So we're talking the 225 slant six. That's when that's what this one was. Yeah. Can't, can't, we haven't seen a slant six with ITBs. I'm sure if you did a search that there would be a slant six with ITBs. I'm sure that that would be. I know that because um, you could do it. You could do it as, uh, you know, three sets of um, DCOEs or something. That would be pretty common, like they use on the Zs and stuff, uh, just with the right manifold. I'd be surprised if Canon or one of those guys didn't make, uh, or even Aussie Speed didn't make um, side draft manifolds for those. Had a Motocraft 2B on a 225 and a 64 Valiant. Yeah, they're the they they definitely respond to uh, more carburetion and and different intake manifolds. I used to travel for work and I love to go to junkyards and see what I could find. I one time found a Boss 302. That would be awesome. It was in a Falcon. Apparently transplanted it with a four barrel with a two barrel adapter. So they they put a four barrel to two barrel adapter and then put a two barrel on a Boss 302. Kind of seems like the wrong way to go, right? Equal length port injection intake manifold. Yeah, that would be cool. You, you bought the motor for 250 bucks. That was a good score, Gary. It is magic. Are you doing on the 396? We already ran the 396. Still planning on running your slant six? No, I still have it. I'm, I'm definitely going to run it. You plan to run the M90 on the truck again? I think so. Ever brought out an intake made 
just like it for a V8 look like a big spider. I've seen a bunch of those. I've seen a bunch of those. We've seen a few of those at, at out at Bonneville, the tube manifolds and stuff that the guys just welded together and they're awesome. I guess V8 has the same issue with outer cylinders. Yeah, if you look at a small block Ford is a really good example, the center carburetor and then on a single plane manifold, the four outer runners are definitely longer than the four inner runners. And that that's kind of why the, <laughs> the guys from Comp Cams came up with the um, four pattern cam <coughs> to, in, in a way to, to help offset that. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do that. But because you can't change the design of the intake manifold with, with camshaft. But... You know, we, we tried some of that stuff when I was doing engine masters. We tried uh, different ratio rockers on the intake and, and on the exhaust and on different cylinders and stuff. And you could you could play with all of that stuff. But in the end, it would just be much better if it had a, if it had a high ram or a tunnel ram style manifold where they were all the same. Better at one RPM, yes, for a broad curve. No average power, good question. We could tune with maybe the front and rear cylinders are for a low end torque and the others for high speed. They just trade off. They just take turns whose turn it is. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going power. Let's see. Richard, I received the cam uh, six, eight. How do I know what cam it is? I can give you the specs. It's only going to be one of two cams that I sent out. It would be the one that you ordered. And so just send me an email and let me know. Weber's or Hillborn's on an XKE and other inline six. Yeah, that helps a lot. Like having different length, you have an engine that's not uh, in sync to a certain RPM. It's more average curve. The different lengths sync at different RPMs. They do. And we've seen that. I ran the fast adjustable LS manifold on the LS3 version. And we ran, you know, mediums, longs, and shorts. And then we ran also uh, shorts on the inner runners and longs on the outer runners to kind of simulate a, a single plane intake manifold. But it just didn't, it just wasn't good. <laughs> Chris, support from Victor Harbor, South Australia. Thank you. Welcome. Our brothers played with slants in, in the 70s. We had the AP6 Valiant here in Australia. They had so much torque. That's cool. You gonna grab the V10 at the junkyard? Nope, I didn't get any of them at the junkyard. What what, what do we have Steve Magnante for? I believe the biggest limitation of the slant six are the mains and the bore spacing. I see three four barrels. Yeah, oh, you have seen three four barrels on one? That would be cool. <laughs> Probably more than it needs, but who cares about that? I've seen ITBs on slant, slant six that had a weird head as well. I've seen the one that the guy did with the, uh, oh no, not on the slant six. On the on the 300 Ford, the guy did the boss stuff with um, ITBs on it. Think about using an air-to-air -air intercooler in conjunction with a plenum mount intercooler. Uh, Martin, I don't know what you mean by thoughts. I saw a lot of that at one point. I think it came from the 80s. People trying to get better fuel economy. Saw 454 with a rectangular port heads on it with a two barrel. <laughs> you, you put the, you do it like I did and put the lawnmower carburetor on it, right? Just came across a 225 last night at the fire property. Might pick it up, just clean it up and let it stand. Don't know anything about them. They're cool, but. You're, you're not going to make a ton of power. Some of the 4654 intakes and superchargers that look like spiders. Yeah, I saw a couple of modular Ford stuff, including a V10 that was there at the wrecking yard. And then I was looking at some of the intakes, um, look at the, the plastic section that they bolt onto some of those modular Fords. 77 is greater than 33, so get the thumbs up, get the likes up. Come on, come on, guys. Do the, do the like thing. Put a Motorcraft 460 carburetor on an International 450 flathead with three adapters. We couldn't find a rebuild kit for the original cover and cast iron Holly single barrel. 
I did that on the 292. We went from a one barrel to a two barrel to a four barrel and then to a dominator. It was silly. It ran. Saw four four barrels on a Buick straight eight. Tony only works on Dodge stuff. He's an old school mechanic, but I wish he liked other platforms. The only German car he said he liked was the Beetle. To you think Tony's narrow-minded? Have you got any videos on 300 Ford? I haven't run one yet. Uh, I'm at a two-to-one ratio now. Before I can buy anything, I have to get rid of two things. That makes sense. I'm talking about going through the wagon is, is, is T, Steve type stuff. Yeah, he's Steve's really knowledgeable on a lot of the original facts and figures and, and build information. I'm glad he's doing better. Have you seen the inline six on YouTube with Ellis heads on it? Yeah, with the Ellis head on it. Yeah, where they cut and weld them together. That's that's really cool. I just still can't believe people would believe that the whole lawnmower car worth a carburetor thing it baffles me yeah <laughs> that's the like thingy that's bondo billy yeah butcher that's probably the motor that you're thinking of they they one guy did a really high horsepower one i thought it was like five or six hundred horsepower so it's probably really high compression and run on alcohol or something but it was a any any use a fairly wildly ported um boss or cleveland um four v heads on it and then a um like a hillborn stack injection on it i mean do you think that would there be an advantage of using both air to air and a plenum amount together on my 408 uh it depends it depends on how much loss you get through each of them and then it also depends on what the temperature of your transfer medium that you're running through your air to water. So the air to air is just using ambient air to cool your boosted air. So let's say you have 300 degree boosted air coming out of the turbos or the blowers or whatever. And then you have, let's say 80 degree ambient air. So the 80 degree ambient air can cool the 300 degree air. So let's say it cools it down to, I don't know, let's say it cools it down to 120 degrees, 130 degrees. Now you using ambient water to cool 120 degree air, you're going to be able to cool it a little bit more, but not a lot. If you use ice water in your air to water that has a 30 degree transfer medium or 32 degree transfer medium, now you can get a big change. In fact, you can get your charge temperature below ambient, which it will definitely make power there. But if you're just using ambient air and ambient water, I, I just don't think it's necessary. Turbo 5.7 Hemi swap the world. I like Turbo 5.7 Hemis. I've got some 5.7 Hemi cams, but shh, we can't talk about that right now. If running a 240 300 Ford, get the air bubbles out of the head. No, no cracks. Are, are you talking about out in, in the cooling system? Try out this poll. Would you like to see a new Big Bang? <laughs> you think that would be 100%? We've only ever had 100% pull. LQ4 with 706 heads, mid-rise, single plane. I don't know. What, okay, I don't know what a mid-rise single plane is. Which which single plane is it? Is it a is it a Holly? Is it a, a offshore one? Is it which those could be the same thing? Is it a Edelbrock? 233, 240, 108, 750 carburetor. Enough on this combination. Mm, it probably, I, I would run it on there and it, it would be fine, but I think on the dyno, we'd see a little bit more with an 850. Richard, we have trouble at the engine dyno with a Mustang 463 valve with a supercharger. Can I consult you? I don't. No, you, uh, you can ask the questions here. Uh, we have a different air fuel bank to bank of 25%. Have you swapped the the um, O2 sensors to make sure that it's not a discrepancy just in the O2 sensors? 
And the thing that I would look at first on your three valve application is I would verify the cam timing on each side of that motor. We've seen factory cams and their positions be off dramatically by 10 or 12 degrees. And you could definitely see a change in air fuel if you change the cam timing on one side by that much. That's the thing I would look at. You could look at the intake manifold and look at distribution. You could flow the injectors. You know, an easy thing would, would be to swap the injector side to side and just make sure that it, it you know, that's not an injector flow problem. But the first thing I would look at would be cam timing. Holly single plane. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think we would get more. There are air pockets in the head. In, in There are air pockets in the casting of the head. I bought a 92 Fiber GT. It's straight out of the late 90s. It has an E303 BBK, cold air, full length, off road, Flowmaster T5, Cobra Clutch, 373s, E7 head with stock intake. I want to upgrade the intake. Yeah, what I would do, uh, Danny, is I would go to the wrecking yard and I would go find an Explorer and I would get the Explorer GT40 heads. And then depending on what you look at the years of the of the Explorers, some of them came with GT40 or uh, uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, GT40 heads and some came with GT40 P heads. So I myself would get the GT40 heads and not the P heads. That way you don't have to worry about your headers. And I would put those on and I would put the, the Explorer intake manifold on, which is essentially a GT40 intake manifold. And then you'd have a good, then you'd have a good combination or, or a better combination than the factory heads and the factory intake manifold. Cause let's face it, those don't work very well. 3.7 V6 Cyclone Ford performance build. I don't know what you mean by thoughts. A slant six probably runs better converted to port fuel injection or constant flow mechanical injection. Yeah, I mean, the delivering the fuel usually is not the problem in terms of power, but the intake design certainly would would uh, change the power output. I know. My math might be wrong, but does 600 horsepower sound normal on 5 PSI with the V8 running 460 horsepower baseline? Uh, six six sixteen is is if it worked out perfectly. Um, if it's a supercharger, then probably not. But if it's a turbo, it could be right there if you're doing everything right. Inline six is a salt flat thing. They did some crazy stuff with the builds. Uh, the Promax Project X 210 Ford heads good for. I don't think I've tried those, but all the Promax stuff that I have tried has worked pretty well. I don't know what people are thinking about, but I know what I'm not thinking about. For what it's worth, the slant six with an aluminum intake and a four barrel ported heads cam aftermarket exhaust manifold and turbo made 400 horsepower on a show called engine power. Okay. Yeah. Boost helps do lots of stuff. I think, um, I think Dulcich has made that on engine masters too. He had a slant six that had basically that stuff on it. He didn't run a turbo on it. He ran a, a torque storm. Yeah, Jim, you could check the compression side to side to give you an indication on whether the cam is off or not. This is Richard's trolls that belong to a financial group of people who are positive that not all cams are turbo cams. <laughs> do, do they have their do they have like meetings and stuff? Because I would want to go to those. Marine GT heads have two bars. Yes, in the castings, we had customers like irrigation engines that were not as easy to bleed as in cars. Okay. UW bus, the same problem. Have to jack a friend up just to get the heads off if you're dynoing. 
in your video, the E7 head is limited to around 30, 30 around is limited to 32 what, Danny? Limited to 350 horsepower. Yeah, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to make 350 horsepower with those. With The reason that we did it is because we ran it on much bigger motors that wanted to make a lot more power than that. And so what we did was effectively increase the draw through the head, therefore artificially increasing the flow rate of the head. It's kind of like running a restrictor motor that you put a 800 horsepower motor underneath and then you restrict it down to 600. I always wanted to build a high torque 292. Richard doesn't need daycare. Daycare. Didn't Dulcich blow a head gasket? He did. He blew a head gasket. In fact, he, he, when he was porting the head that the heads that he kept doing, um, he kept he, he went through, I think, three of them that he poured through water. Uh, not gonna lie, the Ford 300 was probably one of the best engines ever made. What 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 makes you say that? What is it you like about it? Do you have a two or three bar map for your 2.2 T2? Right now, it just has a factory map sensor on it. But when I bought the car, it had a three bar on it. Which are you asking which lifter you recommend to check the hydraulic lifters? You need to put a um, you need need to put a, a degree wheel on it, and you need to measure TDC. And you need to make sure TDC is right, and then you need to line up your your um, uh, your degree wheel, and then you need to check um, the opening and closing points of of one of the cam lobes. Actually. You could check both, but you need, you're going to need to check them on both sides to see if they're the same. I had a pro charge Mustang 3.7. You can make power with them. However, there was no replacement for displacement. Mark Sanchez had a pro charger on a, one of the V6 Mustangs. I don't remember what displacement it was, but it made good power though. Next week, I'm pulling the 66 300 Ford pickup out of, out for my dad and really debating on turboing. <sighs> Would have been nice to, nice to do a lake speed total seal piston ring replacement on that. We're at 53 to see what I don't know. We're at 53 to see what extra horsepower we would have got on that boosted motor. Uh, which one are you talking about? They have meetings, but they have uh, forbidden you to join <laughs> unless you believe in flat earth. Foul float is wife's tail, and there are dedicated cams specifically for every motor. So the flat earthers are also non, non turbo cam guys. That, that really disappoints me. The flat earth thing I can get behind, but the, the cam thing, they lost me there. I stand by my opinion of the 3800 being one of the best engines ever made. So we got 300 guys and we got 3800 guys. So 3D racing, you do you want to do a a ring test or is that something you wanted me to do? You should do a video on removing broken exhaust heads on a 48. Uh, I already have that up. That's already up. We did that on the 48. We welded a bunch of them, and Troy uh, did most of that. One point five Honda CVCC is the best engine ever made. <laughs> I do like those, I, but I I like the well I like that technology, but I also like the cars too. I like the really early Civics. One of my guys is a flat earth guy. Definitely provides entertainment. It is. It's interesting. I, I like listening to, I like seeing the things that, because in every group is, is um, susceptible to this. 
and 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 every group does the same thing. We, we as human beings, we go out and search for things that reaffirm the thing that we already know is true or that we want to be true. So flat Earth, if you're if you're a red state guy, you go look for only red state stuff. If you're a blue state guy, you go go look for blue state stuff. If you're a religious guy, you look for religious stuff. Whatever the deal is, you just go and and. The, although nobody ever admits it, but the reality is, is like, I believe this. So now I'm going to go find stuff that tells me that I made the right decision. And that's, that's not the best way to get data. GT40 heads are not aluminum. GT40 heads are iron. They did make GT40 aluminum heads, but those were aftermarket heads offered by Ford Racing, but not on the factory motors. Those are all iron. And the GT40 intake, and you can get the throttle body there too. I like the 292 and the 300 because they look like tractor engines when you make log manifolds with turbos. It's easy to make turbo stuff. And then on the 300, if you get the the, the fuel injected motor, which is what I want to get, it has um, like a three and three exhaust setup. So you could run twins, which would be even better. Not that it needs it, but it's still, you know, it's still cooler though. I'm not gonna lie, some of the points that the flat earthers make really make me think. Yep, the moon landing guys, all that stuff. The Australian 265 Hemi back in the day uh, went really well. I've heard that, um, and maybe you're the guy that told me that went really well with the manifold and double pumper and and the the engine, whatever it is, <laughs> or the motor, because that makes people mad. Um, if you get it give it displacement and compression and head flow and cam timing and an intake manifold, it, you know, then good things happen. I did see my very, well, not my very first. I did see a, an AMC at the wrecking yard. I think I'm, it may be in the video. Um, but it was a 301, I think. And it was in the specialty section, you know, cause it's expensive cause it's a, some sort of classic. The 401 V6 GMCs are the greatest. They got up to four miles per gallon. <laughs> got up to four miles per gallon. That was a really good one. That was a that was a lean burn one. Uh, uh, Todd, I did see the photos of your engine. Yep. The valve spring leads me to believe that you had um, retainer to seal clearance issues or piston to valve issues. Jesse, I'm with you. The strongest block, half inch main studs, et cetera, 210 cubic inches, 1200 horsepower, and 1000 for 500 miles. Is that? I'm going to scroll back and see what Jesse was talking about. Oh, four liter AMC engines for run on dead cylinders. Cool. A thousand horsepower for 500 miles. Somebody took one of those and ran it at a thousand horsepower for a 500 mile race. Am I a NASCAR race or something? I'd like to see that. I don't think there's a flat, but it did definitely is hollow. If you want to go down the rabbit hole or Admiral Byrd. Um, I don't need to go down that rabbit hole to know about the hollow earth theory. I, I just watched the latest Godzilla movie. So we already know that that's the thing. I really don't care much as long as I wake up every day. That's all that matters, really. Our lives won't change much flat around. <laughs> yep. I stand by anyone that runs oct Octane instead of EV. People are still upset that their brands went away. Yeah, uh, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, that kind of stuff. I would put that Twin Turbo 300 in a Mark III Super. Yeah, that would make people mad. Huh? I wish Jeep four liters were not on the same side for the intake and the exhaust. That's one of the nice things about the, whether you, the guy that did the boss or the Cleveland had to deal on the 300 Ford or an LS set of heads welded and cut up on a 300 Ford is that now you have a cross low head, which is just better. <laughs> XKE had porcelain coated dual three bunch of bananas exhaust that would be cool that'd be definitely cool looking a 304 maybe it was a 304 i think I, oh let's see 
Let's go to the data. So it's going to be one of the first ones that I saw. That's a small block. That stuff just sitting there. That's a Cleveland. Quadrajet, a rusty Quadrajet. It's awesome. Oh, and you know what, you know what else I found there? <laughs> You'll find this interesting. A 1969 240Z. <laughs> That's what they said it was. Yeah, pro probably not. It, it was not. Oh, a set. This was a this was a seventy three AMX for nineteen hundred dollars. Let's get to it. Engine family three hundred four automatic transmission idle speed seven hundred RPM. See owner's manual for information. Dwell settings spark plug gap. CO reading. Ignition timing, idle mixture, 40 RPM uh, drop lean best idle. Nice. Very cool. 304, 304, chrome wheel fuel injected 304. I remember years ago, I don't remember if it was in the late 80s or the mid 90s, when Steve Mignante used to do these builds and take it to the track and then run nitrous on them. I don't remember Steve doing that. Um, I do like watching Steve at when he was at the he was one of the guys at the Barrett Jackson deals because he knew everything about all of these classic cars that would come up. Godzilla was a pro biker and they don't do like that. Let's see. Getting my rear end. 48.8, 35 spline, C-clip eliminators, full spool, welded axle tubes, 373s, three-inch studs, painted and finished with a Ford racing girdle cover. That's nice. Indy alcohol, 60 pounds of boost, dual sequential turbos on a, on a 300 small block. I mean, on a 300 Ford? Nissan TB42 is a straight six. I really want to work on someday, but the USA never got them. I Yeah, I've never heard of that. My car dealers experimenting with turbos? I think Ford ran an unequal length headers on their flat plane V8 to get the rumble sound of a cross plane V8. I don't think that they would do that. I think that on their flat plane V8 that they would want it to sound like a flat plane V8 because they went to all the trouble of making a flat plane V8. <laughs> I expect the machine shop did not install my Elgin HP Springs. They listed good up to 600 lift. I did check valve to piston clearance while assembling the engine. So I broke, broke away from the LS world to go coyote. Everything is so much more expensive. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get cams. But the, not, the nice thing is they make a lot of power right, right away even without anything done to them. After watching your Amara Barra video, I'd like to find a way to swap that engine into a Colorado. Well, they, the Colorados came with a five-cylinder, so a, a six-cylinder should fit. I had a trailblazer with that engine. Yeah, especially boosted. They, they do good. I would probably swap a 300 Ford or a Chevy 292 before I would touch a 2J in a JDM car? Really? A 2J is pretty good. I fired the 71 360 Gladiator Easter, threw a battery at it, and a little electric Edelbrock fuel pump, and fired right up. Nice. Ford Australia was very bad chappy with crossflow ally head on their later cars. That's good. And I would be proud of that too. If nobody else had it, I would definitely say, hey, look, look what we have. 304 is the V8. Yep. And that's what this one was. Should your dealer experiment with turbos? I wouldn't think so. I got an old four barrel AMC Edelbrock intake for a Jeep inline six. It's wall art. That's cool. 73 Gremlin X has a 4.2 liter. There was also a Gremlin there. I don't know if I 
photoed it or not. I think I did because I like Grammys. There was a gremlin there and with an inline six in it. Time is flying tonight. Have you ever heated an intake and tested it? You mean heated the intake manifold? I think the guys at Engine Masters did um, hot and cold intake manifolds. Niblack 57 just posted it. Putting an LT4 blower on his 5.3 with 180 degree headers. That would be cool. I think you'd be slapping a turbo kit on a couple of cosmetics. I should be able to get 20,000 or better. To Are you selling it? Is that what you're doing? Ford XT Falcon. So that was in the 80s, Jet. Is equal length header all about scavenging? H headers themselves are all about scavenging. Then you can get into an argument about whether you need equal length or unequal length. Whether you want a tri y design or four into one or something weird, an eight into one. V8 AMC. Rockers fit on Chevy small blocks and have different ratio. Easy way to soup up a Chevy. Yeah, Todd, you're going to have to look at the bottom end of that and see. Um, you have to see if you've got material in there. Really, the whole thing needs to be taken apart and, and hot tanked and then put back together. Yeah, the lifters are damaged. Yeah, how worried we'd be about material being in there. 2010 AMC stock block and head champion spark plug dyno with Dick Jones. That's a lot of power. Uh, Vernon, I don't know what you mean by thoughts. Two of the four trays were... You broke the lifter trays? That's weird. The difficulty with welding up a cross hole head for the 300 is bore pitch. 300 pitch is 4480. Well, a small block for Ford Cleveland's are 4380. A small block and Chevy LS are 4400. Yeah, but it's still done and and it's they're done and run. And the best way to do it, it actually on the LS stuff is is if you it, it's you have to sacrifice three heads because at least you can get a little bit closer that way. Colorado also came with a 5.3 as an option. The inline five in the Colorado is a good engine. Yeah, it's a lot of money and time. I want to put a 2J with a big turbo in my square body. Tell everybody it's a 250. I think a, a 300 is going to be heavy, right? In the heavier than a 2J, right? 302 inline six GMC motor is heavy. Hurricane came through the Holdner studio. Yeah, it looks like it, huh? All that money and time. Prop the hood is just farm equipment. Yeah, <laughs> there, there is something. To, there is something to be said for that, right? So uh, Grammy driving down the road today. Have two Jeep trucks. Pre-runner. Being a desert resident, those who want a hot fuel test, I've done it. It's called Vapor Lock. Yeah, I've been down that road in the in the dually that I had. The owls did kiss the top of the pistons. Yeah, that's bad. Todd, do you have a do you have a, a a micrometer or a dial gauge or whatever? Can you measure the? Can you take one of the springs off and then measure uh, how much room you have between the retainer and the seal? So take the spring off, put the retainer back on, put the keepers in, and then measure the install height, and then push the valve all the way down until the retainer hits the seal, because that's what it'll contact first, and then measure the install height, and then subtract those two things, and then let me know, because if you have, you know, if that's if that number is 550, and you have a 600 lift cam, that's a problem. 
A lot of power bent big block Chevy pins. So went to Hemi. PSLP Colorado's are rare. Caterpillar four cylinder diesel swaps into square bodies. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. That sounds cool. Yeah, if you can measure that and let me know, because the retainer to seal is important. Piston to valve obviously is important. How about the AFR5, 205s, 405 liter. What higher intake would you match? Um, if if you were wanting to make a lot of power, I I honestly think that a high ram is probably the best five liter manifold out there now. I think that that would be hard to beat. It's not going to work for a lot of hood clearance issues. Uh, John, my truck battery situation is resolved. I put a new battery in and it started up this morning was the first test actually of that. Super cool, has way too much torque, breaks you joints on the regular. <laughs> yeah. Also send you specs on the cam. How, how do you know the specs? If it's a sloppy stage too, I know what the specs are. Todd, your head's milled so much that your push rods are too long. It, normally, guys don't go more than 30 thousandths on those. Yeah, there is a high ram for a 5-liter Ford. In fact, there was actually one of those long, long ago back in the 80s. Certainly in the early 90s. But it was a Wyan tunnel ram, and a guy put a box on it. And it was called the Flowmaster intake manifold. It was the best one I've ever seen tested, but it was basically a Wyan tunnel ram. So it's not it's not a high ram, but um, but it it worked very very well. Two more minutes. How's our pole doing? 60, would a stock slant six intake be better if all the runners were the same length? Well, a third of the people saying no, and exactly two thirds saying yes. So exit, you're, you're, you're liking the BTR torque cam? That's a good one. That's a, for a 4.8 or, or maybe even a 5.3, that's a good cam. Is it hard to tune VVT and VVD? What is VVD? Uh, Aaron, I did get the valve springs. Thank you very much. I didn't get to work on the Dodge while I was there. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bitter because you didn't get my supercharged V6 swap a shot at. What what is what V6 was it? I thought the 3.7, I thought we talked about that. We tried methanol on small block Chevy 358 with a cup of dry ice on a Team G intake manifold and a demo derby and no radiator ran a whole th 30 minutes before the oil started cooking in the pan. Cool. I, I haven't ever run a Spider EFI. Variable valve duration. I, who, what, what motor has that? When do you plan running the slant six? Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's ready to go. I mean, it, the, it just needs the, the head put back on it. Crossfire 3.2 to 3.7, same motor, different board. Different, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what six cylinder that is. Is that a Chevy? Is it a Ford? Is it a... You'll have to educate me. 4.8, the Trek Norris is what I really like, but changing stalls no, is a no deal for me. Yeah, you don't want to be laying under the truck. Yeah, the torque cam is good for a 4.8. 
And I, and I already talked to Brian about doing, um, I told him that I think that they should do a smaller truck Norris cam, like a truck Norris junior kind of thing. Yeah, Carson, that's not a really good idea to for the next person that has to use that. I'm in a very rural area, so BCM tuning is out of question. Crossfire SRT6. Okay, okay. I, I know what that is. I just didn't recognize the other. I guess I didn't get the Crossfire. SRT6, I know what that is. That has the Mercedes engine in it. Yeah, I actually like those cars that have that motor in it. And and what is what is your issue with that car? What is the problem with it? Uh Mike, I can put my email, but I don't have any big block or small block Chevy cams, I don't think. I'm shooting for 400 with a pulley fuel and a motor swap. Okay. I mean, I think that that motor, that motor should be easily able to make that if you have big enough injectors and, and turn the boost up, right? Have good exhaust. Are you putting cams in it, ported heads or anything? BMW and VTEC is kind of that, but with only two settings, but VVT is hard to tune. The early BMWs just had an on-off switch on their VVT. They just had one position of the cam and another position. Later on, they would they would sweep it. But I don't I don't know anything about variable duration. VTEC is not variable duration. VTEC is a, a completely different cam profile. So it has it goes from one cam profile to a completely different cam profile that has a change in lift and duration and and lobe separation angle. I'm going to install a stock six liter Hemi swap crossfire. <laughs> Thanks for sending me the secret turbo cam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big secret. BMW does variable lift, not variable duration. Yeah, no, he was just talking about a different cam profile. That's all good. And on that note, it is time to go, but I'll see you guys all tomorrow morning, probably.